there's a word in the Greek language that there basically isn't any equivalent in English. And that is the word exousia. Exousia. I have written it on the board up here, exousia. Exousia, the first part of that is the preposition which means out. And ousia means uh, being. And what it literally means is no limits at all. No limits. No limits. Period. And we're going to see Jesus showing great authority. Matthew 28, 18 through 20, it says, All authority has been given unto me in heaven and earth. All exousia. Then he tells his church that he will be with her until the end of the age. And now we come back here in Matthew, the 8th chapter, and Jesus is calling out his church and, and, and showing his church that he has the proof that he is the Messiah. Everything that he does here is to prove that he is Messiah and that he has the authority and no man on earth has this authority. And they saw this, even the priests and the leaders, the Sanhedrin, the Pharisees saw him speak with such great authority. They, they envied him. They hated him for it. As simple as that. Now Matthew, the 8th chapter, begins Jesus' messianic credentials, his messianic credentials, and his ter tremendous authority. And when he had come down from the mountain, great multitudes followed him. That word here, there's probably five to 20,000 people following him. Now, Valley Baptist Church, they've got about 10,000 church members there, or did have at one time anyway. And that's quite a few people, and it's, the whole place is just packed and people just moving all over. Well, that's not as many people as were following Jesus, and they heard his words. He didn't have any PA system or fancy uh, amplified uh, microphones or whatever. He spoke and they heard it because he had great authority and supernatural powers. And behold, a leper came to him. Now leprosy was looked upon as a curse of God because leprosy was a terminal illness. And it was terminal in that they were going to die a slow, agonizing, horrible death. Not only would you be dying this slow, agonizing, horrible death, but you would be dying this slow, agonizing, horrible death, isolated from your family and the ones you love. You had to go to leper collars. You had to stay away. And anytime somebody came near you, you had to say, unclean, 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 I'm unclean. Don't come near me. I'm unfit for your company. Now look and see what happens here. And behold, a leper came to him. It's all about Jesus. And he bowed down to him, saying, Lord, if you are willing, you can make me clean. If you are willing, you can make me clean. Now, let me look this up in, in Greek just a little bit here for just a moment. I believe I know the conditional particle there that is there, but I'm going to double check myself. Hopefully, if I can find that in this old worn out Bible here. Oh, it is the third class conditional. That's what I thought. If you are willing, or if you may wish, is what he says here. And uh, he worshipped him, he kept on worshipping him, and he kept on saying, Lord, could he, this means, this means Jehovah, this means Master, could he, Master, and it's in the vocative. And then we have the word eon there, which is a third class conditional particle, condition undetermined, but with prospect of determination. And if you may be willing, the word is thelais there. Second person, singular, subjunctive, subjunctive. The subjunctive is a case that means may or may not. Now this man comes up to, to Jesus and he's not demanding anything. 
He calls him Master and Lord. He said, if you are willing, you absolutely can make me clean. You can cleanse me. Now, only a leper could be cleansed, cleansed by the powers of God. This is what everybody knew. If you were cleansed, you were cleansed by the power of God. If you're a leper, otherwise you're condemned to isolation and death. Terminal. Lord, if you may be willing, you can absolutely, without doubt, make me clean. And having stretched out his hand, he touched him, saying, I am willing, be cleansed. And immediately his leprosy was, was cleansed. No more a leper. What did he look like? And what did this man look like? Was his ears, were his ears falling off? Were his lips all, were his teeth showing? Was his nose half there, just in holes for nostrils? Was his hands, half of his fingers gone? It's very evident that that was great, uh, what we might call degeneration in this man. But he had enough nerve to come and stand away and holler at Jesus and said, If you are willing, if you may be willing, you can cleanse me. I know you can do it. I know you can. I believe who you are. Immediately is leprosy. Now, verse number four is very, very, very important. Very important. Put this in red, yellow, whatever you want to do in your Bible. Put stars all around it. Because Jesus is showing that he is Messiah, King of Israel. And he's going to prove it to the, to the priest. Now Jesus said to him, don't tell anybody what happened. Don't tell anybody how you got cleansed. But, go and show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses prescribed in Leviticus 14, 1-4 for a testimony to them. Let's go back to Leviticus for just a moment. I can find it in here. Leviticus 14. The law of the leper. Then the Lord spoke to Moses, saying, This shall be the law of the leper in the day of this cleansing. In the day of his cleansing. Now he shall be brought to the priest. Mm -hmm. And the priest shall go out outside of the camp. He can't. They will go tell the priest, and the priest will come outside of the camp to see this leper. But he's not a leper anymore now. The priest shall go out to the outside of the camp, and, the, and thus the priest shall look, and if the infection of leprosy has been healed in the leper, then the priest shall give orders to take two live, clean birds, two turtle doves. Now this leper probably hasn't been able to make a living at all. and cedar wood, and scarlet string, and hyssop for the one who is to be cleansed. Two turtle doves. What they did is they take two turtle doves, and it's going to tell you here exactly what's going to happen. And the priest shall give orders to slay one bird. That's Jesus. That bird that's slain is Jesus. To slay one bird in an earthen vessel over running water, and this is live waters living waters. It had to come out of a stream. It couldn't come out of a cistern. It couldn't come out of a pot. It had to come out of a stream because Jesus is the living water that followed Israel. That was living water, a stream of water that followed Israel. And as for the live bird, you shall take it together with a cedar wood and a scarlet string, a scarlet colored string, and the hyssop, 
and shall dip them and the live bird in the blood of the bird that was slain over the running water. That's you and me. We are dipped in the blood and the cleansing flow of Jesus. That bird represented Jesus. This is a poor man's offering, by the way. This is what happened when uh, Jesus was circumcised. They brought this as an offering. And he shall sprinkle seven times the one who is cleansed from leprosy and shall pronounce him clean and shall let the live bird go free over the open field. Turn him free. Jesus died for our sins. That bird. That bird, they... Now, they twisted his head off. They broke his neck and pulled his head from him and, and blood was pumping, his heart was pumping blood into this water, in this basin. They could not separate his head from him. He couldn't pull his head off. It had to keep it on by his skin. And they'd dip that blood in there until, he quit, until the, uh, the bird quit bleeding and quit breathing. That's a type of Christ on the cross. Then you take the other bird, the privileged bird that was privileged with life, and you take that bird and you dip it in that bloody water, and then you turn it loose and it flies away. That's like us. We fly away from our sins, we fly away from our guilt, we fly away from our damnation. And the one to be cleansed shall then wash his clothes, shave off all of his hair, bathe in water and be clean, and now afterward he may enter the camp, but shall stay outside his tent for seven days. Seven is another perfection. This would all happen to this man. And every time somebody saw him, they're going to see he's cleansed, and, and they'll say, what happened? How did this happen? And all the times the priests are watching because this man, on the seventh day, had to go back and be re-inspected. And it shall be on the seventh day that he shall shave all his hair off, and he shall shave his head, and his beard, and his eyebrows, even all his hair. He shall then wash his clothes, and bathe his body in water, and be clean. Now, number ten. Now, on the eighth day, he is to take two male lambs without defect, and a yearling ewe lamb without defect, and three-tenths of a bushel of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering, and one pint of oil. And the priest who pronounces him clean shall present the man to be cleansed, and the aforesaid before the Lord at the doorway of the tent of meeting. All this is going to take place now with this man that Jesus healed. He's going to prove that Jesus is Messiah. Then the priest shall take the one lamb and bring it in for a guilt offering and for the pint of oil, and present them as a wave offering before the Lord. Next he shall slaughter the male lamb in the place where they slaughter the sin offering and the burnt offering at the place of the sanctuary for the guilt offering, and like the sin offering belongs to the priest, it is most holy. This all happened now with this one cleansing right here, this one miracle, this is all going to take place. And the priest shall take some of the blood of the guilt offering, and the priest shall put it on the lobe of the right ear of the one who is cleansed. And on the thumb of his right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot. And the priest shall also take some of the pint of oil, and pour it into it on, in, to his left palm. And the priest shall dip his right finger into the oil that is in his left palm and with his finger sprinkled some of the oil seven times before the Lord. This all took place now. Every bit of this takes place right here for this miracle. And the remaining oil which is in the palm, the priest shall put some of the on the right lobe of the one to be cleansed and on the thumb of his right hand and on the big toe of his right foot and on the, and on the blood of the guilt offering. While the, while the rest of the oil that is in the priest's palm he shall put on the head of the one to be cleansed. 
He shall anoint him with oil. You know, the Bible talks about anointing us, God anointing us with oil and making our face to shine. Mm -hmm. So the priest shall make atonement on behalf before the Lord. And the priest shall next offer the sin offering. And look at all the, all the rigmarole they have to go through over this. Mm -hmm. Now this is going to happen. Jesus cleansed a lot of lepers. And this happened a lot of times. They could not mistake him for Messiah. And make atonement for the one to be cleansed from his uncleanness, and then afterward he shall slaughter the burnt offering. And the priest shall offer up the burnt offering and the grain offering on the altar, and thus the priest shall make atonement for him, and he shall be clean. But if he is poor and his means are insufficient, then he is to take one male lamb for his guilt offering and, and wave it, offering to make atonement for him in one-tenth of a bushel of fine flour mixed with oil for a grain offering and a pint of oil. And the two turtle doves and the two young pigeons, which are within his means, the one shall be a sin offering and the other shall be a burnt offering. Then the eighth day shall bring them for his cleansing to the priest. At the doorway of the tent of meeting. This is a in the temple area in Jerusalem now. So what's, where this is this going to take place? Before the Lord. And the priest shall take the lamb of the guilt offering and the pint of oil. And the priest shall offer them for a wave offering before the Lord. All these priests got to eat of this lamb. Next he shall slaughter the lamb of the guilt offering and the priest to take some of the blood and the guilt offering and put it on the lobe of the right ear, the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of his right hand, on the big toe of his right foot. And the priest shall also pour some of the oil into his left palm. And with his right finger the priest shall sprinkle some of the oil that is on the left palm seven times before the Lord. All this takes place now when this happened in the New Testament. And the priest shall then put them, some of the oil that is in his palm, on the lobe of the right ear, and the one to be cleansed, and on the thumb of the right hand, and on the big toe of his right foot, and on the place of the blood of the guilt offering. Wherever he walks, he's clean. Whatever he does with his hands, he's clean. Whatever he thinks, and whatever he hears, is to be clean. And over the rest of the oil, that is, the priest's palm shall be held on the head of the one to be cleansed, to make atonement on his behalf before the Lord. And he then shall offer one of the turtle doves and the young pigeons, which, is, which are within his means, and he shall offer what he can afford for the one for a sin offering and the other for a burnt offering, together with a grain offering. So the priest shall make atonement before the Lord on behalf of the one who is cleansed, and this is the law for him in whom there is an affection of leprosy and whose means are limited for his cleansing. Wow, what a story, huh? The Lord further spoke to Moses and Aaron and said, When you enter into the land of Canaan which I gave you for possession, I put a mark of leprosy on a house and the land of the possession. If there is staph infection in the house, cleanse it, Wash it with uh, lice, lye water, basically. And if it keeps coming back, then burn the house down. Talks about this. Now, the New Testament again. So that you tell no one, but go show yourself to the priest and present the offering that Moses prescribed for a testimony to them. Without doubt, Jesus is Messiah. Without doubt, Without any doubt at all, Jesus cleansed this man by miraculous divine powers. And we enter into Capernaum. Capernaum means a kafar and a home. That's what the word is in Hebrew, and it means beloved house or beloved covering. And a centurion came to him, entreating him, begging him, and saying, uh, Lord, Master, my servant is lying paralyzed at home, suffering with great pain. What happened to him? Did he get some type of uh, spinal meningitis or something? What happened to this guy? We don't know. 
And he said to him, I will come and heal him. Jesus did. Now listen to this. Listen to this. And the centurion answered and said, Lord, Lord, I am not qualified. I am a Gentile. I am a dog. You can't come underneath my roof. You'll become unclean yourself. For you come under my roof, but just say the word and my servant will be healed. Just say the word, Jesus. I know you can do it. You don't have to see him. You don't have to touch him. You have great exousia, great authority. The undeniable messianic credentials of our Savior. For I too am a man under great authority. With soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. Remember, he's a centurion. He's over a hundred men at least. And he goes and to another and he comes and he comes and to my slave I say do this and he does it. Now Jesus when he heard this he marveled and said to those who were following him and this is how many? Thousands. Thousands. Five, ten, fifteen thousand. They're all seeing this. There is a tremendous witness to, to the Christ, messianic credentials of Jesus Christ before the eyes of all these priests that are so envious they can't understand it. There are synagogues in every one of these little cities. And all the synagogue leaders and, and the scribes and the Pharisees and all of those were all watching. He's taking their authority away from them. They're mad. They want to kill him. Truly I say to you, I've not found such great faith with anyone in Israel. Not like this. And I say to you, that many shall come from east and west and, and, and lay up to the table with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob in the kingdom of heaven. People, Gentiles, are going to come from all over and they're going to be in and fellowshipping with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. But you people aren't. You out there that deny me, you that will not believe, you that are unbelievers, you that hate me, but the sons of the kingdom shall be cast out into outer darkness. And this is those Jews, the sons of the kingdom, Abraham's children. Abraham's children are going to be thrown out there because they won't believe. Now, he had a lot of people believing. There was a lot of Gentiles here. We, we, we had one, one centurion that said, I'm not worthy for you to come underneath my roof. But a lot of these are Jews. And a lot of those out there are just following wrong with their long beards and their tassels hanging down by their ears and their crowns on their head and their fancy clothes and their phylacteries and all of that. Following him. They would not believe. The sons of the kingdom. The heirs of the kingdom. That's the Jews. Will be cast into outer darkness into place there shall be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Verse number 13, the final, finis. And Jesus said to the centurion, Go your way. Let it be done to you as you have believed. And the servant was healed that very hour. The servant was healed that very hour. What a story of great authority, huh? Exousia, without limits. And yet the people, the leaders of Israel, did not want to believe. They did not want to believe. They don't want to believe. The story is there. The proof is there. Every little detail of it is there. And yet, the day of his crucifixion, they screamed and screeched, crucify him, crucify him. They tried to pay, they had paid false witnesses to commit perjury. They had paid Judas Issachariot 30 pieces of silver to lead them to Jesus so they could capture him and Jesus could have walked away except here I am. You know when they came there and he said, where is this Jesus of Nazareth? He said, here I am and they fell down flat. They were so shocked. Hit the ground. That's what it says in, in Greek. They hit the ground. They were just down there and just, oh. 
And there were thousands of them come to arrest this one man because he had great authority. He had great authority. My Father, we send this message out with your great authority tonight. I pray that you touch people's lives with it and lead them to you, lead them to a service, lead them to salvation, whatever they may need all over the world, and feed your sheep, Father, that you've given to me. Please forgive me where I fail you.